Hi, and welcome to the Terra U, the official podcast of the Terra Europe. On this podcast, you'll be hearing from world-class speakers and experts for education, inspiration, and actionable tips to help you live your best Terra life. My name is Ines Amaral, and I'm the creative manager of the Terra Europe, and I'm so happy to be your host today. Today, I'll be speaking to Matt Hall. Matt was really generous in sharing his Zotera journey, not just the highs, but mostly the lows and how that really helped shape the leader that he is today. This conversation is also available in Portuguese and is listed as a separate episode. Thank you and enjoy. Matt, you are enthusiastic, personable and charismatic. You submerge yourself in ice and make reels like a pro, reaching millions of people online. You could be the perfect digital influencer, but you are also someone who personally answers all your messages and that keeps reminding your team that to lead is to serve. You embrace failure and never giving up. And you say yes way more than no. And that's why we got you on our podcast today, despite your incredibly busy schedule. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Terra U. That was that was ridiculously kind. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Matt. So, Matt, you are the mindset king. And uh, at the end of the day, is it all about mindset? I think it's I think it's mostly about mindset uh, in our business. I, there are definitely skills that as you acquire skills, uh, you will have greater success. But I think that I think that mindset is the multiplier, right? So if you have two people that have the exact same skills, the same abilities, the same knowledge about the business, it's going to be the person that has the stronger uh, mindset that's going to build the bigger business. So I think it's the I think it's the most important. Maybe 80, 90% percent of everything is mindset to me. Um, and uh, as part of that, so I know that uh, you have. Uh, Uh, started with a bit of an uncertain Deterra journey, uh, and then eventually you got to be a double diamond. Uh, you've mentioned before that there were a few, like I think four years that uh, that were a bit shaky. Um, so when did the tide turn for you, and and how did you make that tide turn? Oh, that is a long story. Let me compress it down. So yeah, I'd say. Our, we joined doTERRA and our big goal initially was to become diamond in one year. And so that's what we had our vision on, our, our mindset on. I think that's part of why it was difficult um, because we had some results quickly. You know, we achieved elite our first month, but then we sat stagnant at that elite rank for 10 months before we broke through and hit premier. And then we went through another plateau of four years at platinum and that felt like agony to us even though we had a certain level of income you know it wasn't the dream of being a diamond it wasn't that that freedom that we felt like we would achieve when we hit diamond and so definitely there were lessons we learned and shifts in our mindset in each one getting through each of those plateaus and that's part of why i'm so passionate about talking about mindset and teaching these almost spiritual aspects of success is because It was those lessons that I feel like made the difference. It wasn't a script I learned. It wasn't, you know, uh, an approach. It wasn't a, a strategy or a reel that I did. It was really my wife and I working on our mind and our beliefs that helped to catapult us to higher levels of success. And you mentioned there like a few uh, lessons learned. Uh, do you want to share a few of those lessons that you've learned during the journey? Sure, sure. So. If I take our two biggest plateaus as examples, you know, the, the time that we spent, almost a year that we spent at the level of elite, um, we did not have a, a strong mindset or belief around the opportunity of doTERRA, the opportunity of network marketing. We didn't have a passion. Like today, if you were to ask me, I'd say, Inez, you need to quit your corporate job right now and come and build a business with us. And that's my level of passion. I just believe that what we're doing is the best thing and what every single person should be involved with in some way. Now, don't quit your job because we need you on the corporate side. But, but that's my level of belief, right? And so evolving into that is when we started to attract business builders and move away from just product uh, promotion, which we were really good at. We loved the products. We were easily able to get customers. And 
when we had that mindset shift and we became super passionate about the business, that's when we started to see people flooding in to build the business. And that helped us catapult from elite hitting premier. We spent just four months at premier. Then we skipped silver and hit gold. And the very next month we hit platinum. So in two months we went from premier to platinum because we had so many people joining the business because of our passion uh, and belief in the business. Um, and then if you take the other big plateau, you know, four years at platinum, um, that was, that was painful for us too. Cause we were platinum, but like maybe some can resonate with on this call. We were really requalifying as gold, sometimes even silver. And it was our only income and we wanted so badly and we're working so hard to hit diamond. And I think there were a few shifts for us during this phase. Uh, one was we decided that no matter what happened above us or below us, that truly our success was going to be dependent on us. So instead of just obsessing over the leaders that we had, I told the story in Lisbon of, you know, just focusing on launching these people that they didn't want to fly. We compare them to chickens. We love chickens, right? But they didn't want to fly and soar and become strong, powerful, independent leaders. They wanted us to be there to lift them up over and over and over again. And to grow big in this business, you need to find and develop strong, powerful, independent leaders. And so when we decided to shift our focus into creating independence in others, into uh, building leadership in others and finding people who were already in that position of influence and leadership, that's when our business evolved to diamond and blue diamond a year after and presidential a year after that. Awesome. And um, you, you mentioned there was a shift there from like the communicating more products to communicating more the business and the mindset. Do you feel like the people that you attracted with that change also change? Like, so the people that you attract when you communicate just the product and then the people you attract when you start communicating more the business side and more the leadership and mindset side? Yeah, yes and no. I think I think you'll attract different people. And to be clear, we still talk more, I would say, about the products than the business, but we just have a balance of belief and in, in, our, in our communication. And so even while some of the people might have been the same, the results that we got because of our belief in our communication shifted. So someone who we would have just pinned them as a customer and they would have been a customer forever because we never presented to them the door or we presented the door to them building the business, but not in a passionate way with, with the shine in our eyes to say, you know, this is what this is what you should do. You should do it with us. We're the best people you could do this with. We're going to the top. You know, that that passion shifts a customer into a share or a builder. And so there's that aspect. And then I do believe, as you as you also alluded to, that you do attract a different type of person. You attract that which you're looking for. Um, and so Definitely, we've started to find more business builders as we talked more about the business as well. People that already had credibility and had been successful in business in the past. Perfect. Um, and we already said mindset a lot in this podcast. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, do you think that uh, talking and thinking about mindset, it's is it a privilege? So, yes, I think in some ways... I've, I've reflected a little bit on this concept uh, since you first you know, asked me a little bit about this. And I, I do think that there are circumstances in our life that set us up for, that can set us up for great success, that can be a privilege to us. I think that mindset is one of the things that, that obviously anyone can develop. You hear so many stories of people overcoming difficult things. And it's almost like the greatest mindsets come from people who went through the hardest challenges in life. And so I think that uh, a strong mindset is ac accessible to anyone. And even in people that come from a more privileged background, sometimes or oftentimes their mindset is weaker because of that. Uh, I, I, I love working with people. An example is, is the way that I work. Like I love working with people that are, have really struggled in the past or are currently struggling a lot and helping them to overcome those struggles in part because their story becomes so much more impactful, but also because instead of having a fixed mindset, they have a growth mindset, right? When you have someone who has a privileged or a successful background, oftentimes their mindset is kind of fixed and it might be, it might be more difficult for them to go into the next phase of growth. 
Uh, anyone who comes from a background of difficulty or struggle, usually they're more open and they have more of a growth mindset. And so there's no limit to how far a growth mindset can take you, right? So. Perfect. Sounds good. And um, I've heard you speak as well often about uh, expectations versus reality. And uh, how do you approach this with uh, your builders and, and your leaders? Yeah, I like to different than you really did your research. Wow. Uh, different than most builders in the way that they work, like for them to recruit someone, they're going to tell them everything that they will do to support that person. So, hey, I'm going to be here with you every step of the way. I'm going to help you with your presentations. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to put people under you. I'm going to you know, have a promotion for you. They, they, they sell everything that they're going to do. And what that does is it creates expectations and expectations not met become frustrations in the future. And so I like to do the opposite where I actually almost discourage people from joining me. And when you have the right, when you have a strong posture, you can do this and people will still be attracted to join with you. But when I set, I set very low expectations for what people should expect from me. I tell them, listen, I will give you every single step and teach you exactly what you need to do to be successful in this business. But it's going to be 100% you who will create the result. I'm here to support you. I'm here as a guide. But you are the star of the story. And, and I almost tell, I, I, one of the things I say at the very beginning, like in our launch interview, is I say, my goal is that you become independent of me as fast as possible. So instead of them saying, hey, I'm going to do your presentations for you. I'm going to teach you everything. No, I, I want you to be a self-starter. I want you to be, become independent of me as fast as possible. That's what my upline did with me that helped me to become one of their most successful teams. And that's what I want to do with you for you to become one of our most successful teams. So I set expectations that they're going to have to grow. They're going to have to develop and their success is not dependent on me. And that's, that's what sets them up to be a strong, powerful, independent leader. Awesome. And yeah, I see you as well being quite realistic about the business opportunity itself, uh, because yeah. you're not telling people immediately, uh, okay, this might go very well, but you're like setting the expectation to be maybe, maybe this will help you with your rent or maybe, yeah. And then maybe yeah. after that, eventually you'll get to, to a higher level. Yeah. It's going to be hard. You're going to go through rejection. You're going to suffer, but I will teach you how to overcome all of that. And absolutely your, your income will start small. It will first replace your car payment. First, first it'll just replace your products. First you'll, you'll be get into profit, right? And then it's, it's slowly advancing. And what can happen is extraordinary over the long term. But I never sell get rich quick. I always say our opportunity is, a, is an opportunity where you can get rich forever, but it's not, it's not get rich quick. It's going to take time and it's going to hurt. And as we are talking about expectations and what it can happen in the future, does network marketing work? Yes, of course it works. We are, we are proof that it works. Every leader, doTERRA has thousands of people that have achieved the rank of diamond. Just last month, we had three new people on our team hit the rank of diamond. And these were not people, none of them, all three of them are people that have joined our team in, the, in less than two years, the last two years. Um, so not only does it work, but it continues to work over and over and over again. Uh, we had we had almost 20,000 people, 19,000 new customers join our organization just in August, just in the month of August. And what that means is that thousands and thousands of people on our team are getting significant results. They're bringing in new customers. That's creating uh, commissions. That's creating profit. That's creating new success stories. So uh, once you once you see and you understand what is happening today, uh, that question, the answer is, is obvious. Absolutely, it works. And it works for every single person who's willing to give it enough time and they're willing to keep their mind right and keep their mouth moving, right? Sharing constantly what it is that we have, so. And do you have some uh, like particular things like that uh, or like some myths that you kind of try to disconstruct when uh, when maybe you find some people that are a bit more skeptical towards uh, towards uh, network marketing? Yeah. Oh, man, there's 
Well, there's generic myths that I feel like society follows. And then there's also myths about network marketing. So to give an example, people generally in society will say things like, oh, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. That's not true. <laughs> I know a lot of people who make a lot of money, but they, they're not healthy people, right? Or I know people who are super fit, but they're terrible with, their, with managing their home life or their relationship with their spouse. And so there's a lot of general myths that, that we promote and, and we say them without even thinking sometimes, right? Uh, but then there's also, there's also a lot of misconceptions about network marketing. And that's one of the things that we have the privilege to overcome with people as they take a look at what it is that we're doing. Um, they have the myth, for example, that you need to get in at the beginning, right? I have, I have people, I've been in doTERRA for 12 years. Some of the biggest results on my team who are, are people who joined one or two years ago in my team, right? So they weren't with me 12 years ago. They weren't with doTERRA 16 years ago when doTERRA started, right? Hundreds of thousands of people joined doTERRA before I did. Hundreds of thousands. And yet my wife and I are in the top, you know, I don't know what it is, maybe the top 100, top 50. I don't, I don't, doTERRA doesn't do that whole rank game, right? But we're in the top results when hundreds of thousands of people join before us. So there's myths like that about our profession uh, that, that we, yeah, we get to educate people on and help them, help them understand that it's not that way. You don't need to have a lot of contacts. You don't need to have a lot of money. It doesn't matter when you get started. You could get started today or you could have gotten started 10 years ago, right? These are all things. There's the myth of saturation. Everybody around me uses the products. Well, then why were there, why are there multiple new blue diamonds that just hit blue diamond here in Utah, where I live, where doTERRA started, where there are hundreds of thousands of customers already with 80% of their new customers being in Utah? How did that happen? How did that happen, right? So people look... And they think, oh, there's one other person promoting these products in my city. There's no way I can grow. That's just silly. That's just silly. We need to look at numbers. We need to look at facts. Um, and helping people overcome some of those mindset blocks is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah. All right. So we made it clear that it works. But there are certain things that you probably have to sacrifice in order to make it work. So mm -hmm. what do you think are the, the main sacrifices that, that people need to do to, in order to make network marketing work? Yeah. Mm. The biggest sacrifice, I think, is to sacrifice your ego, to realize that it's not all about you, meaning the product is going to be the superstar doTERRA, the opportunity is going to be the superstar. So people think in their minds that they have to become an influencer or they have to become, you know, this, this great leader that's amazing in all of these areas. And the truth is that, that that will be required if you want to be like a double presidential diamond, right? But for you to get results, really, you need to just sacrifice your ego and realize that it's, it's not you. It's not about you, right? It's about other people. It's about serving them with this third party thing that is doTERRA that's amazing and marvelous and, and much, much bigger than, than we are. The next thing that they get to sacrifice is some combination of, of time, energy, and resources. So it's going to take an investment. And it is true that if you have more resources like financial ability, then maybe you'll be able to invest a little bit less time or, or less energy because maybe you can do additional incentives for your team, or maybe you'll be able to pay to travel to be there in person with your teams that are far away from you more easily. And that could make some things easier, right? So, but for others, they don't have resources, but they have more time. And so for them, the sacrifice is going to be their time. Some people don't have time or resources, so it's going to be their energy. Like when they are building, they have to give 100% of who they are in that moment. They have to give all of their energy and just be super, super passionate. And that will help them overcome the lack of resources or time. So uh, there, there will be sacrifices that will be needed, but it will be kind of, it'll be different for each person. Uh, and I would say, you know, my wife and I, we've, we've sacrificed a lot to get to where we are, but it's so worth it. And that's the most important thing for you to know is that those sacrifices will pay off. They will be worth it in the long term. Yeah, I, I have done some interviews in the past with people who are like d d doing Diamond Club and everyone was like, it's so exhausting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like an incredible personal growth journey, but 
you get very tired. It's like three months nonstop. Uh, but yeah, and then you you, st you just get to the next level and yeah, yeah. it just keeps going. So they, they manage to build a lot of momentum, but it does, yeah. it does come with that. Yeah. Um, so we know we, what we need to sacrifice. Uh, what do you need to learn in order to make network marketing work? Hmm. Yeah, I think you need to learn, uh, first of all, how to work on your mindset. As, as in all the skills that you need to learn, repetition is the, is the mother of, of skill, right? It's repetition. So you need to learn how to look at your own mind. And when you have negative thoughts or you have limit, limiting beliefs come into your mind on a daily basis, and this will happen multiple times every day, you need to develop the habit of questioning and the skill of questioning your thoughts and your beliefs. And asking yourself if that belief is serving you, if it's a if it's a fixed mindset or if it's a growth mindset, that's a that's a practice. That's something that we train. That's a skill that we acquire is watching our own minds, right? Questioning ourselves. And then there's the practical skills beyond mindset of how do you invite, how do you present, how do you enroll, how do you close someone, how do you lead, how do you inspire, how do you create momentum, how do you get your team into action? All of those are your responsibilities. So you cannot have the mindset looking down into your team of, oh, nobody's doing anything. If nobody's doing anything, that's your fault. That's a lack of leadership. That's a lack of a skill acquired. And so uh, those are skills. The good news is that initially for you to get really significant results, It just comes down to the simple skills of being able to find people, to invite them, to present to them, to enroll them, to close them, right? Those are the basic foundational skills that you need to learn. That coupled with the mindset, that can take you to diamond for sure, for sure. And then from there you learn, you know, deeper leadership skills and how to create momentum and leverage and, and how to really uh, create a team that's explosive. And how do you see your um, leaders acquiring those basic skills? Where do they need to go? Who do they need to speak to? How, how are they getting them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they get them through our trainings. They get them through um, the, the guides that doTERRA offers. doTERRA has so many resources that even if you joined and didn't have an upline, those basic skills you could learn just from doTERRA if you wanted to, right? Sometimes it's fun to have an upline to hold your hand and guide you through the process. So we do that for people, right? They get on our Zoom calls, they get on our trainings, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you know, with the person who directly enrolled you into the company. Uh, those are ways that you can start to develop those skills. But it, at the same time, that's the theory. That's where you learn the theory and you never really learn something. Like it doesn't become a part of your DNA until you've done it. And so it's, it's on the street, it's in the living rooms, it's, Uh, it's in person with people. It's on Zoom calls. It's doing the thing that really helps you to solidify and acquire the skill for yourself. Um, and that's where people have to be willing to just take massive action and do something until it works and and be willing to fail, be willing to mess up in the process to to strengthen the muscle of those skills. I th you touched there in, in a, something that I think is, is quite crucial is that uh, you have to be willing to fail and you have to go again and get yourself back up. And how, how do you deal with the, with the failure? You just learn to, you just learn to, I wouldn't say love it because I don't want you to attract it all of the time, but uh, tolerate it. You learn to, to, that it's just a part of the process, right? It's just like uh, when I, step into my gym and I do a workout and my muscles get sore. I don't love being sore, but I, but I tolerate it. And, and what happens is it's just a sign that soreness in the muscle is just a sign that I'm growing. And when you look at failure the, the same way and you realize, okay, this is just an opportunity for me to grow. Everything that happens to me is really happening for me. It's not, it's not against me. It's happening for me, not to me. When you understand that, then you realize that you're just getting stronger. You're just learning, getting feedback. Failure is just feedback on how you can adjust things for the future. And so today, if I, if I invite someone to join doTERRA with me to build a business or to try the products and they say, no, this is a, this is a scam or these products are, are you know, placebo or this is a lie or any of the things that they could come out that could really hurt someone, if you were to attach a heart monitor to me, And, and like my heart rate rate would not shift <laughs> when they say those things, right? Because it's a muscle that you build up rejection and, and those things. And so failure is just feedback. It's just uh, insight on how you can step forward, maybe in a different way in the future, or 
maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just that you have a quantity problem and you just need to do more to filter through and find the people that are open. We shouldn't expect that everyone is going to be open. We shouldn't expect that each rank advancement is going to happen one month at a time, right? There's going to be ups and downs along the way, and that's just a part of it. And um, so what is the mindset of a leader? Like how, how should the leader see themselves and how should he, uh, they see others? Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. I think a leader should see themselves as a vision, uh, a visionary. They should see themselves as a, a transfer, a vision, someone who sees both in their business and in each individual person, something that those people don't see in themselves and call that into existence through their communication. So I think a leader is a visionary. I think that a leader is, uh, is someone who takes action. There's someone who not only is in action themselves all the time, but they create action in other people. They're able to call that out of others. A leader is independent. A leader doesn't depend on their upline. They don't depend on the company. So the company, like some people get so dependent and say, oh, doTERRA, give me a promotion. Like give me a product promotion, right? Like we need an amazing BOGO this month or something like that. And I think that's weakness. To, to, to believe that, like you don't need that. You can create momentum without, the, without anything that the company does. So to put your growth, to say that your growth is dependent on the company is just, it's just a fallacy. It's just false, right? So a leader has that mindset. It doesn't matter what the company does, I'm going to grow. I'm going to adapt. I'm going to find the pathway forward. And um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is that a leader moves people. Yeah, they have that vision. They see things in other people. And they call that into reality uh, through their leadership and through their communication. So that's what I'd say. Yeah, and uh, I, I I went through your Instagram, obviously, stalking in <laughs> in, uh, in preparation for this interview. And I did see a lot of comments regarding like how present uh, you, you are and like mm -hmm. how like the people that were there like oh you always answered me or, or always like had my back so <laughs> it's, yeah. um, it really reflects your mindset <laughs> i i try to be super accessible like anybody anyone who's listening to this you could send me a message on instagram or you could send me a, a message in whatsapp and you'll get a response and honestly you'll probably get a response within 24 hours i won't guarantee that but you probably will obviously i prioritize prospects first and then my frontline leaders and then the rest of my leaders and then cross line. And I have, I have time that, you know, I, anybody who reaches out to me, I try to, to help and serve in some way. So I think accessibility is a, a key le leadership trait. And it's one that I, I do feel like lacks sometime in the top leaders of doTERRA. And I get why, because I'm overwhelmed by all of the, the day-to-day -day things that we have to manage, right? As we're building a big team. But also if you put the right systems in place, you can be accessible. And what that does is it just, it just gives that person who's getting started the confidence that they need. All they need sometimes is one message, just one little audio that says, hey, go for it, do it this way, say it this way, try it, come back and let me know how it went. And they'll go out and they'll take action. So I do, I do try to live that. So I'm, I'm grateful that that's, being, that, that that's out there. <laughs> It's for sure it is and it is part of the sacrifice right <laughs> some of your time and then you get the reward um so we we've uh, spoken about this a bit uh, in the beginning um and i just wanted to reinforce it uh, on uh, how important uh, is belief yeah belief is man the your ability to move forward will depend on how strong you hold to the right beliefs, right? Um, so you can't, you cannot move without belief. You, you, there's, there's no, there's no momentum. There's no growth. There's no movement. There's no motion without belief first. And so belief is really, it's just the seed. It's the beginning and it's not the whole process, um, but it is, it is the beginning. And so you have to develop that belief. And so each of you, I'd, I'd challenge you, like analyze yourself and say, where, where do I need to increase my belief? Do I need to increase it in the company? Do I need to increase it in our products? Do I need to increase it in myself? Do I need to increase it in my leaders? And then your whole focus should be to devour content, 
to find the ways that you can increase that specific belief that you need to increase. And if you do that, then the how will work itself out through that process. And how do you ignite that belief in your teams? It depends on the category. So, um, but really it's through, it's through experience. It's really through, it comes down to one word would be stories. And that sometimes is them having their own story, their own experience, or it's them seeing the experience or stories of others. And so, for example, with the products, I will hunt for testimonials and I share those testimonials with them uh, to increase their belief in a specific product or in a product category, right? Or with the business, I will hunt for if they say, oh, someone in my area is not going to have success, then I'll hunt for an example of someone who's in an area like theirs that has had success despite. So it's just showing people that others that are in the exact same circumstances as them can have success despite. What are the lessons that you are teaching your kids now so they can be successful later? Ooh, that's a fun question. Um, we, we are trying to involve our kids as much as we can in our business uh, without putting you know, pressure on them to do what we do or anything like that. But I really want my kids to see that we work hard um, and so, for example, I brought my son with me on a trip to the Philippines to our uh, to do a, a big tour. And we went around each day we were on an airplane and in a different city. We had the experience of, you know, driving uh, eight hours in a car where he got to see some really, really humble homes. And, and he turned to me, I remember, emotional. And he said, Dad, their home is smaller than my room in our house. And that was really impactful. Um, and he got to stand up and share his own experience with with the products and things like that. Um, once he, you know, he was uh, playing his switch while peeing in the toilet. This might be too much information, but he dropped his his switch, his little toy in the toilet, and it it's not waterproof, so or pee proof, I guess. So it uh, it got broken, and we encouraged him to save up the money to do it himself, to get a new one himself. And so he went out door to door with the essential oils and he started selling oils door to door and he made enough money to buy himself a new switch. So things like that, we try to include them in our business. We try to show them that, um, you know, they, they will get value in exchange for hard work. Um, and we don't really pay them just for doing chores around the house or things like that. We actually have a little board with sticky notes where there's different ways that they can create value for our family so they can do different projects or do different chores that are, you know, on top of their normal keeping the room clean and things like that. And they can earn $3 or $2 or $1, depending on the value that each of those chores bring to our family. And so uh, those are some of the things that we do, ways we try to teach them. Um, I wouldn't say we're perfect parents, but we have a lot of fun and we really, really enjoy raising our kids. So. No, that's awesome. And I asked this because I saw in some of your videos, um, you telling them, um, yeah, that uh, you want them to know that you work hard and that you fail, but you, you get yourself back up. And yeah, I think that that was yeah. really cute. And I'm sure that's part of your legacy. Mm, I hope so. Um, and we have um, a final question to wrap this podcast. And that's, uh, can you tell us who you are in one word. In one word? Oh, hmm. What am I in one word? Creator. I think creator is the word I would choose. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, you can blame uh, uh, my colleague Ash for this because I said in one sentence, but he was like, let's do one word. <laughs> so now he's, this is a much bigger challenge. <laughs> you have really have to. That know. is a big challenge. <laughs> no, that's that's great. Yeah. And creator is a fantastic word. Uh, I think I, I will I would maybe steal that one if one day I'm asked. 
<laughs> I'm ask this. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Matt. I think it was super valuable and uh, love having a chat with you. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry for all the messages you're going to get after this after this podcast airs, uh, because now people know you're going to answer them. But uh, I think I'm, I can't wait to, to hear about those interactions. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been an honor. I always feel so energized after listening to Matt and today he really didn't disappoint. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave us a review and share your thoughts. In our next episode, we will be speaking to Dr. Branny Riggs, Vice President of Essential Oil Education for doTERRA. He is going to be sharing with us everything there is to know about supplements and our brand new supplement guide. Thank you and see you next time.